Hey yo everyone, welcome. It's Ahmed Muzaffar here and today we have a session to talk about well I we're going to share um, an operation that we always do in .NET but I'm going to share with you my own way to do that so you may like it because uh, we always have in our projects we always need to map between models and DTOs which is something very crucial and especially when it comes to distributed systems you have server, you have a client and the client works with DTOs while the server internally or the operations in the, in the application layer goes with the models and so on so despite all these details uh, the focus part of this video is going to be on how we can map our models to DTOs and vice versa so basically before we get into the details let me introduce you to the demo that we have in here and as you can see here I have a very minimal API just to simulate our case and our minimal API has two endpoints one to retrieve all the customers and another one to retrieve customer by ID uh, my data is stored in like a static list that my our data source is this static list basically in here but like in your real world projects it could be an SQL server database Azure Cosmos DB Azure storage JSON files it depends so you have list and of course you have repositories on top of that that retrieves like all the data and one by ID add a sort of date delete etc but it might get all in here um like the customer object is a little bit big it depends on your business logic and it has like if I go uh, let me navigate in through the solution explorer so if you navigate in here I have three classes customer which is like big it has color properties and it has like references to two lists one for addresses and another one for orders and it has some like auditing data that we use uh, like creation date modification created by and modified by something like that also here we have address object which is a very basic object also it has some data and here I have an order object like this is just for referencing purposes only that just to make this demo a little bit more clear so for, for this demo as I've said I'm using minimal API but like in your real world project if you are using clean architecture or stuff like that you have the domain layer the application layer but to keep things straight ahead I just went into this very simple one in the details that we are going to send and receive from the client we have address DTO which is kind of the exact same one for that but excluding the auditing properties we have the customer details that contains most of the properties that we need to send to the client uh, when the client requests a customer by ID so this is the data that we want to send the ID the full name phone and website and the list of addresses and in here I have customer summary and this is a little object that I use when the client requests access for all the customers if I'm retrieving him like 1000 customers I'm going to retrieve a minimal version of it so the response is fast and simple so what we want to see basically in this video is how we can map those models to DTOs and vice versa. So, so basically, uh, most of you is familiar with the library AutoMapper. AutoMapper is a great library that's being used by millions of .NET developers and it has been there for quite a while right now. And um, it does great when it comes to this kind of, of mapping. So basically you can inject the mapper, you can you configure them and when the properties are the same it has the capability to map directly the properties automatically using some kind of reflection and you can customize your mapping when it comes like to difficult or complicated objects and nested ones. Well basically in all my apps I have tried the mapper a lot but I haven't used it so much because the way of dependent, like injecting the automapper and configuring it, especially when it comes to nested objects and stuff like that, it requires configuration that actually I didn't like. So I used basically the extension methods to do this mapping and I was very comfortable with it. And this is what I'm going to show you in this video. If we go to the API project, or in your case, it's going to be uh, the application layer project, or, or, or depends. But I, I usually use the application layer to put my projects. In this sample, I'm going to put them in the API because this is like the server project that we have. Uh, here I have a folder called mappers. So let's get started, see how we can map those into DTOs, the, the model that we have. 
So in the mapper, I'm going to create a new file by clicking Shift F2, and I will call this one uh, customer mappers, and then hit add. So yeah, I have this. So basically, I make this static because to create an extension method, it has to be static. And then the first function that we have is to retrieve a customer details DTO. So we need to add reference to the shared project. I will call it to customer details DTO. And it will be ex an extension for the customer model that we have. Customer, just like that. Cool. So this is one. Another one we will have is a customer summary DTO to customer summary DTO. This customer summary. Uh, sorry, customer, like that. And I will create another one, another like set of methods for the addresses. So class, address, mappers. I'm calling them mappers because as you can see, you have multiple uh, DTOs. Okay, so in here, public static, address DTO. Great. So I will start with the small object first, which is the address. So in here, let me move it to its own file so you don't get lost with it. So I'll open the address mapper. Cool. So right now, here because I'm writing a normal C sharp function, I have the full freedom to like map it the way I want. So basically, for this simple case, there is a little useless code I write, but you can avoid it using some um, like some methods like. Um, clone member wise or like writing your own reflection code to copy the exact same properties but i'm okay with writing those little code at least it is more readable and i don't expect anything to be um, something happens underneath the hood that i'm not seeing especially when it comes to the mapping process i know it's a little bit boring but we're going to see the benefits when it comes to big objects and because of utilities such as like github copilot like some code being written automatically for us. So for this address DTO, it's exactly the same. Like we, we have the same properties, but for the customers, we are in a different case. So right now we have the address. This is how I map the address. Let's go right now to the customer and see here we have more powerful stuff. So two customer details DTO. So right now let's return that object in here. And let's start populate the properties. So customer.id, name, uh, customer dot name. Uh, sorry, the name will be the full name. So I can because it's a normal method. I can just manage it just the way I would like to do it. Customer dot last name. Cool. So I can add a little bit of logic. Of course, the logic that you are going to to put in here is going to be related to mapping, like not business logic and stuff like that. I have phone, and what else do I have? Website. Okay website and addresses look this is cool when it comes to nested objects like this you can say addresses so i'm going to make it customer dot addresses of course i'm going to add this sign to make sure that it is not a null and then dot select a dot to address dto so that one will return to me an enumerable of address dto right and that's that was easy and straight ahead, especially when it comes to unnested objects. Even if you have more, like you have orders, you have addresses, even inside the addresses, if you have, if you have even a nested object, it's easy to do that. Just, just call this one and you're ready to go. So when it comes to a very complicated and big objects, um, this approach is extremely easy. And then for the customer summary DTO, I can do just that, the same. Um, new customer summary DTO. ID equals customer dot ID and it has only two properties so customer dot first name and customer dot last name so it's something as simple as this very straight to the point uh, very basic and another feature that is cool let's say that in the customer like I, I use that in my own apps like customer has a creation date modification date and so on so basically we store that in the database at the UTC in the UTC format, 
or in the UTC time zone. But if you already have the client time zone that you want to retrieve it, like the client tells you in which time zone, so you want to try like convert this date, you can convert it in here and keep the business logic in its own by like you can pass, for example, a time zone info object like that. Or, or you can pass like any object that helps the translation process and that's very easy very straight to the point and it makes stuff like as you can see in here it's um, it's a normal c sharp method you can play with it the way you want you can pass write some logic and etc etc you can even though make those like optional in case uh, you don't have this values always available for you but you can do that and that's this is a great feature that I like a lot, especially when I have big complicated objects that requires some kind of mapping. So right now I close. So in my business layer or for this sample, let me go to. So right now I have this slash API customers, which is retrieving all the customers at the R from the repo, which is something we don't want. So what I will do, I will call in here, get all dot select customer dot to customer uh, sorry to customer summary DTO just like that it's very easy to convert right and there is no injections no configuration to be done um, no libraries to be set no third packages especially think about it for unit testing too very straight to the point there is nothing to be you don't need mocs or registering dependencies and stuff like that here it is that just the exact same thing so we have this dot id of course it's not null then two customer details dto so that's it right now we run the project in postman in here i have the two calls simulated get all customers and get customer by id so if i kill click get call get all customers as you can see i have retrieved the lightweight version of of my customers if i click the get customer by id i retrieved the full version which is my dto is very straight to the point just as what the client is actually needed and what our API should expose. We keep our data for ourselves, that the data that only the server wants and the mapping process was very easy. So I hope like you find that useful. Um, make sure to leave your, your thoughts in the comments if you have any question about it or if you have any, if you notice some stuff that I actually wasn't able to figure out during this, I would like to open a discussion about that. And um, uh, yeah, thank you so much and make sure Make sure to visit our Discord server in here that you can find the invitation link in the description box. We have a very cool and big discussions regarding the upcoming courses. We have technical questions, suggestions, and so uh, much more stuff like that. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.